Hi, uh, in this video, we'll learn about how to manage CPU affinity to various programs and processes that we launch on Linux. Uh, Linux today runs on various machines which are multi-core by nature. I guess today, when you buy any kind of computers, it's very likely to find more than one CPUs on your system. These CPUs could be, you know, on a single CPU die, we call them as cores, right? So if you want to find out how many CPUs are there on your Linux system, you can always try running this command on your command line. The easy way to find out is by running a command called nproc. nproc is a script friendly command, which will just tell you the number of CPUs detected on the system. The laptop that I'm using right now is based on a core i7 processor, which has about six cores technically, but each core having two hyper threads. So totally these are seen as 12 different CPUs by the operating system. So this, for all practical purposes, you can assume there are 12 CPUs on the system. Now we can also get more details about the CPU by running a command called lscpu. Let me just zoom this terminal a bit. So if you run this command called lscpu, you get detailed information about the CPU and CPU architecture, right? It tells you about uh, what architecture is based on and what kind of CPU mode it's supported and what is the address bit size, how many bits of physical address space and how many bits of virtual address space supported by the CPU. All these details you find assuming that the CPU is based on Intel architecture, right? So because I'm running on Intel platform in this case, uh, basically LSCPU gets all these details by looking up a file, which is slash proc slash CPU info. If you don't find the command called nproc or, you know, LSCPU, you can always find these details out by manually opening up this particular file called slash proc CPU info. Uh, you should have known by now that whatever you find under slash proc folder is basically they're not persistent on disk. This is also called as a pseudo file system. This is the way of kernel exposing various statistical data to user land as if there are files, right? Um, these contents are dynamically generated when you read them, right? That's how pseudo file systems work. Procfs is one of them. So in here, you can see details about processor zero, processor vendor ID and other details. When you scroll down, you'll find details about processor one, processor 2 and it goes on because Intel is predominantly an SMP class architecture. I think I guess every single record set that you find here will look sort of identical. So in fact, um, if you want to find out how many CPUs are there on your computer and you don't want to use the nproc command, maybe that command is not there on your Linux environment. At least you can do this. You can actually say maybe grep processor slash process CPU info. And you can maybe put a WC minus L on it will tell you the same answer, right? So you can find out there are 12 CPUs. So when you launch any application on this machine, by default, the Cherry will find out the CPU that's not being used most extensively. That is the case till 6.0 kernel. I am yet to see how the Cherry performs the 6.0 kernel because they have changed the algorithm and choosing the CPU. It's called as a nest scheduler. Now there's a recent feature, which is as I speak, the 6.0 kernel was, um, was just released last week. So, um, the way CPU, which CPU to use is decided very differently on the 6.0 kernel in comparison to what existed till then. Till what I'm using right now is a 5.15 kernel. So you can just run by unit minus R. So in this particular kernel, basically the CPU that's not used most extensively will be nominated for launching new applications. Basically you want to launch a process on a CPU that's got the least load factor, right? The, the, the kernel or the scheduler subsystem maintains information about the CPU utilization and the overall load factor on every CPU specific run queues. So on Linux, there are run queues on a per CPU basis. So each CPU has got its own set of run queues. So the moment you add a task onto CPU 0's run queue, CPU 0 will execute it. If you add a task on CPU 1's run queue, CPU 1 will execute it and that's how it works. So this is the standard behavior, but we do have a choice to set the affinity for certain processes to run on a particular CPU. We can do that programmatically. Uh, if you're a programmer, the way you do that is by using one of these APIs, which is called as shed underscore set affinity. This particular API is a positive, is it, this, this API lets you set the CPU affinity for a given process. So you could do, if you leave the process ID as zero, it'll be for the current process, but if you, you can also set, say to a, any particular process that's already running and you need to set the CPU set mask. And in order to set the CPU set mask, you need the CPU set macros. Uh, I will I'll talk about the programmable, programmable way of doing this right now, at least in C. I will maybe cover this in another 
uh, set of training programs mostly on training videos mostly on linux system programming but now this is a system call that you use for changing the cpu affinity for a given process but if you are a normal person who is not a c programmer you don't want to write a c program but you want to just use this feature there's a command available that does this for us and that command is called as task set command in almost most standard linuxes you'll find this command called task set which lets you set the cpu affinity for a given process so you can type task set minus help as it, as it indicates when you type it without any argument it asks you to type task set minus help it gives you complete details about what all switches are supported so task set basically takes uh, two para two parameters the cpu set mask in hexadecimal format or a cpu list in range format uh, followed by the command or the process id based on the switches that you pass in here so let me just show you how to use it at the ba very basics so let's say i want to launch uh, a command on a particular cpu um, and the command i want to make sure that it keeps continuously using cpu so you can actually monitor it and um, if you want to create a program or any any tool uh, that is 100 percent cpu intensive one you can write your own program or two you can just use good old cp command so i'm going to use task set minus c this i'm going to select c3 okay cpu number three the cpu numbers start from zero zero one two three it's basically the fourth cpu right so i'm just selecting the fourth cpu and uh, i'm just going to say cp slash dev says your random slash dev slash null. so when do run this you can see um, what this what does this command do the cp command will read from this particular file which happens to be a pseudo device file slash dev says your random and it writes to this particular file when you open this file for reading you get random data and the kernel because gets uh, cpu intensive to generate these random numbers in fact to monitor this when i run this i can actually reduce this terminal size a bit i'll go to another terminal and i can run a tool called htop if you're not aware htop is a modernistic top command available on most linuxes so it's a successful top command you can also use top command and use some special switches but i could use htop the moment you use htop one thing you can observe is that you can see the cp command is using almost like 100 percent cpu right 100 percent cpu utilization in here so it's it's pid 76544 and you can see the priority and all the details and it's cp slash view random slash is null so this is top running running command and you can see the cpus here cpu3 shows up 100 percent utilization the red bars indicate that the cpu utilization is fully in kernel space if you see green bars it indicates user space cpu utilization you can also see that i'm actually running this entire uh, session with obs studio i'm doing all the complete recording of the entire session using obs studio so that is also taking some cpu cpu utilization that's come second here right so this is actually doing the complete video recording for the, for the training videos that i'm performing right now and you can see the cpu utilization of that it's scattered across multiple cpus because maybe it's multi-threaded no it's actually multiple processes over here anyways so we can actually change all these fields. You want to know which CPU is executing the CP command? One of the ways to find out is change this entire format that is listed here. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to go to setup by pressing F2 key and uh, in the columns, sorry, in the column, in the available meters, no, not in the columns, I think, yeah, left column, right column, hang on a minute, display options, select display, display options, or you can say columns here, sorry, display options, tell you general options in here. Um, but I'm going to select columns in this place. There's so many columns being printed, like who is a user, what is a priority, what is a nice value. I don't want all these fielders, fields right now. So I'm going to remove them by uh, using the F9 key. F9 is to delete. I don't want to really care about the user, the priority, the nice value. I don't care about the memory utilization details. Uh, I'll put the state of the process, percentage of CPU usage. I don't really care about the memory utilization. Let me leave the time as it is, but I want to add some extra fields one of the fields I want to add is the CPU that's executing this code. You can see this ID of the CPU that process last executed on. Select that, add this in here. I'm using arrow keys here. I can use left and right arrow keys to navigate between these elements. Up and down arrow keys will select different menus. So right now the setup, I mean selecting elements in setup. When I select columns, I use the right arrow key. I select all the active columns. If you don't want a column, press the F9 key to delete it. You can see those status keys here. F9 for remove f8 for moving down f7 to move up right and f10 for done i selected the cpu number so I'll let me move the cpu number much above so i'll use f7 key to move it up 
The second field is going to be the processor number. And once you're done with this, you can actually now press the F10. When you see this, you can see the CP command is running on CPU number 3. So CP3 is showing 100% utilization. Now I'll reduce the zoom factor in here, go back in this place or in another terminal. Here I'm going to say task set minus C. I'll just provide the minus C switch is indicating select the CPU based on CPU list. Maybe run on CPU number uh, 6 or 7. I can use comma separated um, CPU numbers or you can also use 6 hyphen 9. Run this particular command on either CPU 6, 7, 8 or 9. So selecting the range of CPUs that this process can run on. And what command? I'm going to run another instance of CP command this time. When I launch this, you can go back and check in here. You can see that the next CP command is nominated on CPU number 8. The second field shows up CPU number 8 as you can see here. But can I change the CPU affinity for our existing process? Yes, you can also do that. In order to change CPU affinity, let's assume that this is a process ID 76619. I want to migrate it from CPU number 8 to let's say CPU number 2. In order to do that, you could switch this by using task set. All right, looks like I have so many terminals open. Yeah, there it is. So I can say task set. I'll say minus C. I'll just select two and uh, but because I want to select the process ID, so I'll select minus PC CPU number two and I'll just say seven six six one nine. So the moment I say this, you can check what happens to this particular process. Right now it's running on CPU number eight seven six six one nine. Right. So if you run this now, in fact, shows very clearly the current CPU affinity is six to nine, but now the new affinity is changed to two. So it's now changed to CPU number two. So this way you can pin which CPUs can execute your processes. Now, how good is it on your normal systems? In most cases, you don't want to use this feature. This feature is useful only when you're deploying Linux on specialized appliances. If you're building your own router, which runs on Linux or a specialized appliance like a setup box or something like that, where you have a dedicated set of applications running, you don't have lots of apps like you see on my desktop. Your dedicated application that's all that are started during your system boot up it might really help to pin the processes to dedicated cpus so they don't shuffle back and forth so they are more optimized in terms of cpu caches so when you migrate a task from one cpu to another cpu the cache lines of the one cpu must be flushed out right so there'll be some kind of cache delays in incurred so this would be avoided to the maximum when you actually pin processes to different cpus but on a normal desktop, it's a it's not a good idea. You just let things be as it is because in a normal desktop, you don't keep applications running forever. You launch a browser, you close it. You launch a terminal, you might close it. You might run some commands or you can maybe, maybe running some builds like compi compiler builds and so on. So these are processes that don't run for the entire lifespan of the system. They have a short lifespan. They just launch, they exit. In such cases, you want to leave the kernel to decide which is the best CPU to run them on. And the kernel can actually migrate among CPUs based on the CPU load factor. When you pin the CPU this way, um, it's possible that the other CPUs could be sitting idle, but they will now never never be used. The two CPUs will be used forever for running these processes, while the other CPUs will be sitting idle. May not be a good thing sometimes. May not be a good design uh, practice on a desktop. But for appliances with controlled application, this is a useful feature. Now I told you how you can use task set command to change the CPU affinity based on the CPU number. If you don't want to put the CPU number, you can say task set. You don't have to use this minus C switch. You can use hexadecimal notation. The entire details of how to use task set is documented the moment you say task set minus minus help. There are also examples on how to use them right here for your reference. So you can learn from this. Finally, before I finish this video, some of you might ask, how do I do this programmatically? Well, it may not be a C program, but if you want to do it in Python, you can do that. One of the interesting things about Python is that most of the system calls of Linux are exposed generally under the module called OS module. So you can actually set affinity or get affinity by using OS dot ched underscore set affinity. This function exists. I do one thing. I don't want to use this normal Python because it doesn't do auto completion for me, which is not very really convenient. So I'll use 
IPython for now. I can use IPython 3 on my machine. IPython is a very intuitive REPL which gives you auto-completion. I'm going to use that. The import OS and say OS dot shared underscore get affinity. Get affinity will get the CPU affinity for a given process. Let me put a question mark. It basically takes just the PID, nothing else. So I'll just take one of these process IDs, 76619, right? So that's a get affinity of 76619. Oh, it says no such process. Maybe I exited that program. Yes, I exited one of the instances, right? Yeah, I exited this. Uh, in, in this terminal, I was running it. I exited that. So I'll go to another terminal where I'd launched one other instance and check them up. Yeah, it's here, I guess. I guess, I guess we can find out from the oh, command. Yeah, 76554. 76544. Have we tried to use that process ID now? It runs a set with a value indicating the CPU number. I guess the CPU numbers are enumerated as from enumerated starting from one, I guess, in this case. So it says CPU number three. No, no, no. I think it's from zero. We can see in the background, it's running on CPU three. We set it to CPU three here, right? You can change that by using shared set affinity of PID and you can provide a list of CPUs it can run on. So I can just provide a list of, let's say one. You can very well see in the dull background, or I can show it here. It went to CPU number one, right? You can actually set it to CPU number eight. It switched to CPU number eight. The CPU eight has become 100% used. Well, you can do it for the current Python program. The Python runtime, you want to change the CPU affinity of it, run on a dedicated CPU, you can actually use the PID as zero. PID as zero indicates select the current process. I can make the current process run on CPU number, let's say CPU number 10 for now. Well, this Python instance is not performance intensive. It's basically blocking, waiting for user input. So you don't see any CPU utilization being reported, nor do you see them in the top output. But the moment I put a while through pass, this runs an infinite loop. You can see a big list of green bars here, indicating that the Python process is busy running code in user space. The CPU is executing in user space, right? Executing instructions of this Python process. So there are many ways you can do it. One, you know the system call, know the API, or two, if you're a if you're a person who works in the shell prompt, you can just use the command called task set to achieve the same. All right then, so I just gave you some brief up on setting CPU affinity for a process. So if you do like this particular feature, like this video, um, do comment so if you have any further queries to it do uh, do ask me questions on comments so i will answer them when i find time thank you very much hope to meet you in the future training future videos